Hey everyone, this is Lola Reddy from Abstract Music Lab, and today we're going to talk about mastering chains. I'm going to show to you my mastering chain, I'm going to show to you all the plugins that I use in my mastering chain, and I'm going to show them in action in one of my tracks. It's an old track, it's a track that I have never released, but you can see them in action, you can see how I use them today, okay? Let's dive in, let's listen to the track, and I hope you like this video. Yeah, let's dive in. So this is the rack that I use, always use. I always use the same plugins. I always use the same concept. And I've been using this for the past three, four years. And it always starts with this volume automation plugin. Basically what this is doing is lowering the track, the input of the mastering chain in 6 dB. So I'm making sure that I always have 6 dB of headroom, regardless if the mix is loud or quiet. Then I have this fab filter over here. Uh, the only thing that I'm doing here is, is a cut at 30 hertz, around 30 hertz. I normally leave it between 25 and 30 hertz. I always do a 48 dB cut. And the reason we are doing this today is only to cut frequencies that we don't listen to and then take a little bit of space in our volume. So by cutting them, we can push the volume a little bit louder. Then I have this OTT over here. I have it with only 10% dry wet. So it's only acting a little bit. I saw this in a mastering chain from a producer, big producer, and I've talked to other producers which said that this is wrong. I've always tested with and without it, and I advise you to do the same. To me, it always sounded better with the, the plugin. I always, for every track, I try it on and off, and it always sounds better with it on, so that's why I always leave it on. Later, we have a high cut at 18,000 hertz, and I have a 48 high cut, 48 dB high cut. Sometimes I do a 12 dB cut. Sometimes I do it a 48 dB cut. The reason why I do this 18,000 hertz is the same reason why I do this 30 hertz over here cut. It's to basically take these frequencies that we barely listen to, but they take a little bit of space in our volume. So by cutting them, we can lower our track. We can higher our track a little bit in terms of volume. Then comes the stuff that I adjust a little bit more each, specifically for each track, which is the compressor, the imager, the automations, and the maximizer. So let's start with the compressor. I'm going to play the track so you can see how much I'm compressing, and then I'm going to explain all the compressor settings. Let's play. Well, you can see that I'm compressing around 2 dB and I have a slow attack and a fast release. Basically, I'm letting the picks through, but I'm at the same time that I want to capture major trends. That's why I have a slow attack and a fast release because the moment this starts, this volume starts hitting the threshold, I want this compressor to stop working. I'm compressing 2 dB because I like it less compressed. I've tested with 4 dB. Sometimes I, I use 4 dB in my tracks. Sometimes I use 2 dB. Depends on how compressed I want my track to be. Then we go to the imager. The imager, we have two settings, which are these ones over here and the bands over here. The bands, I never change the frequencies. They are always at these frequencies over here. And the reasons why I never change the frequencies is because I've tested adjusting the frequencies and not adjusting the frequencies and always sounds better like this. So if it sounds better like this, just leave it over, the, over there like this. How much I'm, I'm expanding these bands. Normally the band four, I normally expand from 40 to 50, band three from 25 to 35, band two from 10 to 20, and band one, I always leave it at zero. Oh, Leo, but why don't you put band zero at minus 100, making it 100% mono? Because all the elements that need to be mono are already mono from the mix. So I don't need to make sure that this is re-monoed. Then we go to, to the automations, and then let me just take these off. The automations, I have this stereo wideness automation before the drops, and I have this volume automation before the drops. This is the subject for another video, so I'm not going to explain this one right now, but I always do this to make sure that the drops hit a little bit harder. I also have this automation over here, which the purpose of it is to balance the volume within sections. So I'm making sure that the drop one sound as loud as drop two, the break 
is not as loud as drop two, for example. Lastly, we have the maximizer. The maximizer, I have it with a fast character, 100% stereo independence, it's transient emphasis all the way through. Transient emphasis gives a better transient to your track. It controls the transient before it hits the limiting a little bit. So the limiting doesn't hit the transient that hard. True peaks, true peaks is a, uh, as you can see here, it prevents clipping and analog domains. Basically when you're listening to your track at a speaker, even though it's at zero, it might distort a little bit. So that's why I leave it at true peaks. Just one thing, these take a lot of CPUs, true, uh, true peak and transient emphasis. So you must have a good CPU for that. I always use the IRC4 modern version and I adjust the threshold according to the volume that I want to my track. So for this example, I adjust this until the point where I like the integrated loudness of the track. And so basically that's where I go. <music> adjusting until the point that I like it. Sometimes I use FabFilter Pro-L to check RMS, but most of the times I use Yulian meter to make sure that this, I'm looking at the, the volume with LUFS and not with RMS, especially because of all this loudness war and all the, the major platforms adopt, adopting LUFS. That's why I always use LUFS as a, frequent, as a reference point as well. Basically, that's it. This is my mastering chain. I've always used this mastering chain and I've been using it for the past four years, as I've said it. If you check all my mixing and mastering projects, mine and from clients, I've always used this mastering chain as well. I hope you liked this video. I hope you, you enjoyed it, took a lot of content out of it. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. This will be the first video of a complete series of videos that I'll be doing for Abstract. And yeah, see you in the next video. Ciao.